for most everything that we're going to run across, the domain will be all real numbers, especially once we get to polynomial functions, the domain is all real numbers. So we only have two things that really limit our domain. Okay, so let, let's say this. For the most part, the domain will be all real numbers, negative infinity to positive infinity. For the most part, your domain for these expressions will be all real numbers. You have two restrictions, though, two things to watch out for. Okay. Um, so restriction will be um, <coughs> any number that makes the denominator equal to zero. Any number that makes the denominator equal to zero will be a restriction on the domain. So you have to watch out for that. If you have an expression that's a fraction, if there's a value that would make the denominator zero, you have to take that out of the domain and it won't be all real numbers. Another guy that's a restriction is um, any number that makes any number that makes the radicand of a square root equal a negative number. <coughs> so these are the two main restrictions we have on domain for right now. Later on when we see other types of functions that are not, I guess, normal for what we're used to seeing, <coughs> then we have other restrictions on the domain. But for right now, anything that makes the denominator equal to zero, we've run into that before, or anything that would make your radic hand become negative. You have to restrict those guys. So you'll see some of these examples in the book. They'll say something like this. They'll have, you know, y equals x plus 2 over x minus 5 plus 7. And they could say, what is the domain? What are the acceptable values of x I can plug into this guy? Well, is our domain going to be all real numbers? No, because what's the bad guy here? What would make my denominator yeah. zero? Five. Five, right? So my domain will be all real numbers um, all real numbers except for five. Does that make sense? Any number you want to plug into this guy is going to be okay for x, except <coughs> what makes the denominator equal zero, which is a positive five. And the way that you would describe this for your domain would be <coughs> from negative infinity to what? Five. To five parentheses, parentheses and then I join this with what? Union five. That's what all real numbers will look like if you were to remove five from that. Is that okay? It's, it's, this is how you express everything except for 5. It says you can get as close to 5 as you want to from the left. You can get as close to 5 as you want to from the right, as long as you don't what? As long as you don't include the 5. What if I were to give this example? And I say, 2y minus 5 is equal to the square root of 6 minus x. I can almost plug in anything that I want to for x, except I've got a square root. What did I say about the limitations <coughs> for the square root? It can't be negative. The radicand can't be negative, so the radicand must be what? 
positive or or zero, right? So, so look at this last guy. F to find the restriction here, we found what would make the denominator equal to zero, and we took it away. For this guy, what you need to figure out is this. I want my radicand, six minus x, to be greater than or equal to zero. And when I solve that piece, so all numbers less than six. Less than or equal to, yes. If I solve this guy, I get negative x is less than or equal to negative six divide by negative 1, and then you have that x is less than or equal to positive 6. So it's not just what makes this guy equal to 0, which is 6, but you have to understand what, what can you use, what can you not use. So as long as I use x's that are less than or equal to 6, I'm OK here. So how do you express that with your domain? Less than or equal to 6 is what? In interval of notation. Uh, uh, negative infinity. Negative infinity to six. Do I union this with anything else? No. If you pick anything that's greater than six, for example, seven, try to plug in seven here, what happens? You have something that's negative inside the square root, and that doesn't work out well for you. <coughs> so this is your domain for this guy. So the two main things we're looking for right now as far as what can restrict our domain, what makes the denominator equal zero, because that means the expression is what? <coughs> right. No. When the denominator is equal to zero, um. you're undefined. What is the kind of stuff that makes, what happens if the square root has a negative radicand? What kind of result do you get there? Not no solution. You get things that are complex. You get the I stuff coming out of that. So that's why we have to restrict this part. And we restrict the denominator being equal to 0 because we get an undefined expression.